Well, hello, everyone. Happy Saturday. At least that's the day when we're recording this uh, connection uh, for this week. And appreciate your patience. I know we normally try to do these on Tuesday and Thursday, but uh, Thursday, uh, our new staff member, uh, Brother Jeremy Gilbert, and his family uh, came into town and we were helping them move. And uh, so looking forward to you meeting them once again um, here on this coming Sunday, if you're able to be with us or even through the live stream. Uh, So grateful for that and grateful for how the Lord has provided and moved in that way. And has helped them, and and uh, certainly uh, looking forward to how they will fit into our church and be a blessing to uh, each one of us. Hey, for the devotion today, um, I, I I wanted to start with the question: um, Did you know that people have opinions? Yeah, yeah, they do. Uh, in fact, uh, in the day and time in which we live, we don't even have to ask many people for uh, their opinion or if they have an opinion on certain topics. Uh, Most people uh, will tend to uh, share that openly and freely, whether that be with you in a personal conversation or in a public forum of some sort, or uh, oftentimes it's by way of social media that people tend to uh, voice their opinions today. Even again, if you weren't even asking for it, uh, you can scroll through your timeline or or, uh, through your social media feed, and there are all kinds of opinions today. And oftentimes uh, those opinions are exactly that. They're just an opinion. It's not maybe a lot of facts or uh, based on fact. Uh, Oftentimes opinions, uh, our emotions about things are based on just that, our feelings about uh, the day and time in which we live, both good and bad. And uh, I wanted to just uh, bring our minds and our thoughts back to the book of Philippians. It's one of my favorite books the book of Philippians, and one of my favorite chapters in Philippians is Philippians chapter number two, speaking about the mind of Christ. And uh, of course, Paul uh, gives us some wonderful instruction here. But beyond that passage uh, that really uh, starts the, the chapter in chapter number two of Philippians, I'm going to read just uh, a few verses down a little ways farther, beginning in verse number 14. Here's what Paul says, Philippians 2, 14, do all things without murmurings and disputings. Now, we could stop there and really kind of have a devotional on that or just to say those words because uh, this is a living book and it's God's word and it brings conviction in and of itself. But do all things without murmurings and disputings that you may be blameless and harmless the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as lights in the world. And then he continues on in verse number 16, holding forth the word of life. That's who we are supposed to be. Uh, I know, uh, again, m- many of us have opinions, and we love to share those opinions. We love to, to have people agree with the way that we think about things. But really, the perspective of Paul, remember writing it from a jail cell, uh, the perspective of Paul and what many of those uh, apostles and, and uh, early church folks Uh, what they lived in their life was in a government that was really uh, anti-everything that they were doing. And uh, we see that that perspective and that uh, persecution building and building and building, even in that first century. And so Christians are suffering through things that, uh, quite honestly, many of us in our day uh, are not suffering through. And yet what Paul said is, uh, don't don't, uh, live your life murmuring and disputing, murmuring those things within you that are kind of stirring you up and getting your emotions up and your own opinions and, and views on things. Listen, don't, don't, uh, don't get caught off and uh, turned away from uh, living the life that God wants you to live by those things. Disputings, those can be more outward uh, in their nature, right? Uh, those opinions, those murmurings, those speaking to myself kind of times, those live themselves out then in disputing with other people. And instead, what we are supposed to do is that we may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. Paul says, listen, I, I know you're not going to agree with the, 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 the culture around you, <laughs> 
I'm not asking you to. God isn't, isn't uh, thinking that you should be uh, just going along with the culture. No, no. He understands you're, you're put in the midst of a culture and a society that is going to be against you and does not agree with you, does not believe like you believe. And yet at the same time, uh, rather than getting um, pulled aside from really your true mission and uh, the burden that God should have on each and every one of us, that is uh, getting the gospel out and, and living the life that he would desire us to live. So many times we're pulled aside by the events of the day. And uh, Paul is just getting us back to that mind of Christ. Don't be pulled aside. Don't, don't get involved in murmurings and disputings that you may be blameless and harmless the sons of God. Now, Christ makes us to be the sons of God, but are we acting like that in the way that we behave ourselves in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom, now here's the thought, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. And here's the key, holding forth the words of life. We have the words of the truth. This truth doesn't change. And yet because of uh, our frustration with how things seem to be going, we can get uh, pulled aside from that and away from that. And I just want to encourage us, let's get back to the truth. Help us understand that this book is our foundation. It's not philosophy. We're not spouting out some, uh, some uh, vain deceit or, or philosophical idea that really has no foundation at all. It's just the belief in anything and everything except for what we disagree with. And uh, so many times we can find ourselves doing that rather than just coming back to what does the book say? What does the Bible say? And how does that help us? Let's act as uh, the sons of God, right? Let, let's be uh, lights shining in this world that is, well, Paul says, crooked and perverse because we have the truth. And so let's act like that. Let's live like that. Let's behave ourselves like that, whether we're on social media, whether we're interacting with someone, whether we're just watching the news among ourselves. Let's act like the sons and, and daughters of God, and uh, let's allow God's truth uh, to guide and direct our every thought and action and attitude. I'm telling you, it'll be much better for all of us if we would do that. We won't be tied up with all the anxiety and frustration and anger. Uh, it brings us back to who God is and uh, his ultimate purpose. And that's, uh, that's always a blessing. And I hope that's an encouragement to you as well. And uh, I constantly have to be thinking back in this way. Boy, I need to have the mind of Christ about these things. And I hope you will as well. Looking forward to services tomorrow. Hope you can join us, whether in person uh, here at 11 o'clock or 6 o'clock tomorrow evening. We've got missionary Riley Barrett with us uh, to England tomorrow evening. Looking forward to that. Finishing our uh, sermon in Matthew 18 tomorrow as well. He sets the plan. And so we hope to see you, whether by live stream or in person. And uh, have a great rest of your Saturday.